Hey y'all, welcome to another Cigar Night. It's so good to be with y'all. Sure appreciate ya. And uh, listening to, uh, huh. well, maybe you're not listening. I don't know. <laughs> I just appreciate ya. And tonight's a special night. We're having two of my favorites here. I gotta get the cutter out. We got the cutter with the safety back so you get a good cut on your cigar every time. And I also got one of my favorite cigars, Papa Frida's from Drew Estates. This is, I don't necessarily know everything about all cigars, but I know a lot about my favorite cigars. Well, some of them. I know when I like a cigar and when I don't. And when I really like a cigar, I do some research on it. And Papa Frida's is made from the premium tobacco leaf on the tobacco plant. You know, tobacco plants are tall, probably six feet tall, have different varieties of leaves depending on how much sun they get. There's a leaf called the Lajero leaf, which is a premium leaf. And it's, uh, it's really, Gosh, smooth, creamy, not harsh. If it's aged right, it's just, it's a really awesome. Well, this is that leaf, but this is the leftovers from when they make their premium cigars, which are like the, uh, I think T52. They're, I've had a number of them. They're Liga Pravada, and uh, I don't exactly remember the names. This is the Papa Frida's, but man, are they good cigars. Now, are they expensive? Yeah, they're 20 plus dollars a cigar. And so these little guys, I bought a box of 50 for like, oh, $260. So they're still a little spendy. They're about $5 a piece. Most tobacco stores sell them. If you haven't tried them, they're a great cigar. They're a touch on the strong side, but they're really, really good. And <laughs> my favorite whiskey that's almost gone and this whole COVID-19 stuff, they're just not stocking it in the stores. And uh, it's a real, real bummer. I happened to order some online and they accidentally shipped it to Montana. I won't say anything about that, but they won't do it again. And uh, if you guys haven't had it, it is a Nick and Coffee grain whiskey. Wow, is this stuff good. And I'm about done. I've been sipping it and saving it and sipping some of my other whiskeys. I don't have any necessarily bad whiskeys. I drink Not Greek, Elijah Craig. I bought some Green Spot single pot whiskey the other day. Yeah, that's some good stuff too. Well. We'll break that out but uh i have some friends coming over later tonight so i thought i'd come out here before they get here and we just have a short chat light up a cigar i don't know what we'll talk about uh, you know i'm a slobber guy i like to get those nice and wet pull off the band that might be a little unexpected surprise in your flavor profile uh, we're gonna turn up the gas i hear it a bit there we go Yeah, got a good start on it. The start's really important. It's worthwhile to spend some time to get a good start. <laughs> My dad's little Bunsen burner here. Probably not the best way to light a cigar, but man, it's dang fun and uh, brings back good memories of my dad. It's like today, uh, yeah, I'm missing him today. Today's one of those days where, uh, yeah, the, gre the grease a little more intense today and uh, definitely missing him. I was thinking about him though. Hilarious stories, and uh, <laughs> in some ways, I'm so much like him, and I'm so glad. And when people tell me that I'm like him, and it, it just brings my heart a lot of joy because he's a man that I admired a whole lot. My dad was an eternal optimist. There was a good side to every awful thing that happened, and, and there were some awful things that happened. And dad would, he'd always find a way. And so I was laughing at myself. I've had. This last weekend, there, there's been some calamity around here. Um, I'm restoring this old camper, and uh, I'll pull you guys in on some video clips of that old camper. Super fun, little uh, '66 loafer. It's it's a, it's a cutie, and it is in rough shape. Like I got it, I got it for free, which is amazing because the thing, even in the rough shape that I got it, was uh, still worth some money. But. I started pulling out like the inside, the interior, find out that most of the framing's rotted and I was replacing the framing and then decided that I was gonna pull the floor because most of the floor is rotted. And so got the floor all loose and pulled the floor this weekend. 
and I was like, I was so excited. I pulled the floor and once I get the floor in, I can button it all together and I got new glass in the windows. It's got like those louvered windows, the four pane louvered windows and got that thick quarter inch plate glass. Gosh, they, this thing's gonna look sharp when it's done. Anyway, pulled it out. I was it Friday. No, it must've been Saturday. Pulled it out in the morning, afternoon. The wind just started blowing. Oh my gosh, just started blowing. Hey, I'm gonna put some wood on the fire here. I'm gonna take a short break. But you can still hear me. You can still hear the neighbor driving by. So all is not lost. But I wanna keep this fire going. There, that ought to buy us a few minutes or so. Yeah, the neighbor's walking by and they think I'm nuts out here talking to myself, but oh well. So the dang thing, well, it didn't blow off Sunday. No, I must, all right, so it didn't blow off on Saturday night. It blew off Sunday night and I'm getting ready to go to work and my son comes out and he's like, hey dad, do you know your camper like blew off? And I said, no, I sure didn't. And I go outside and <laughs> there it is laying off to the side and uh, there's the frame. And uh, it's so funny because I, and I'm obviously rubbing off my kids and their papa rubbed off on them too. Well, it's sure gonna be a lot easier to replace the floor. <laughs> yeah, that is the influence my dad had. I didn't get mad, I didn't cuss. Now, was I upset? Absolutely. You know, it's frustrating. You work hard and you try to make a plan and you try to get things done and you know, crap just happens. But I'll tell you, there's, there's this thing and we'll talk about this more but you only have so much emotional energy. And when you have a day and it starts out that way, you have no idea what the rest of the day is gonna entail. And so you definitely, at least in my case, I didn't wanna spend all my emotional energy just cussing and being upset at that. So, and plus it's a habit I formed. I really, I have, I've learned it from my dad and it's, it's so much better. There just isn't that much that's really worth getting upset about. And if there is, you still got your explanation marks left. You know what I mean? If you get upset and go full throttle all the time, you're just a stressed out mess. And nobody takes you seriously when you're really upset because you always get pissed off and you're just touchy. You gotta save your explanation marks. So it's like, if there is a time, and man, it does, it rocks your world because we all get tested sometimes beyond what we can handle because that makes us stronger. And I'm not saying it's beyond what we can handle for a moment. We get a handle on it pretty quick, pretty quick, but it's nice to have those exclamation marks left. So the people around you know that you're serious and you're not mad all the time. So yeah, chuckle, chuckle. Cause like my dad, when we lived in Nebraska and my parents were getting a divorce, oh, so good. dad bought a 1967 Volkswagen bug. So this, this was probably 1979, 1980. So a little older by then. And I don't know why he's always had a fascination with Volkswagen bugs. And so we got this Volkswagen bug and uh, the thing had issues there. It just did. It would, it would always drive, but whether or not you had heat, whether or not you had seats, oh, uh, well, I think the stick shift pulled out a couple of times when I was driving it, my dad decided to uh, use it as a work vehicle. And so at the time he was a painting contractor. And so we pulled all the seats out so we could fit five gallon of buckets of paint in there. And then we drove on the five gallon buckets of paint and we could fit more five gallon buckets of paint in there. Yeah, not exactly legal. And this is by the time the seat, law, seat belt laws had passed. And so, yeah, we were living a little on the edge. And yeah, I never thought I was redneck, but I think growing up, I might've been a little redneck driving in a Volkswagen Bug, yellow, because my dad had it painted. It was black originally, forgot to mention that. Yellow, without seat and without heat. And that's the car I learned to drive as in as a teenager. Now, fantastic car to learn how to drive in because you can spend cookies just on a dime without hitting anything. And they just, you know, the engine's in the back where the wheel, the drive is, and those things just go and they don't get stuck. But driving around in the wintertime, no heat. And so literally, as we're driving down the road, I can stick my arm out the window and I'm scraping the windshield on the outside and on the inside. And then I have my buddy, because I always had a buddy with me. It was either Patrick, or one of the gang there that we hung out with, scraping the windshield on the other side. And just like, <laughs> but we were having fun and we were teenagers and we had the parents' car, it was good. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, and it still had, 
and it still had problems. But when my dad first had that, mm, that is good. Be able to walk by, try not to look like too much of a weirdo. She looks kind of upper class, and uh, yeah, I actually don't care. It's pretty dang funny, but. This thing, I don't know what, it had some kind of fuel line thing, but that engine caught on fire more times than I can remember. And we're going down the road and dad's obviously looking in the rear view mirror or smelling something or somebody's like, ah. you know, and we pull off, dad jumps out and we have this old army blanket in the back, wool army blanket, put out the fire and we're broke down and get out of the car looking around. And I've told this story a few times. So if you heard it before, I'm sorry, but this is just my dad. And this is how I learned how to be and look around. He's like, what a beautiful place to be broke down. He'd take a minute. He'd look around. Maybe walk around the car. Look around. And then he'd work on fixing it and getting us back on the road. And it wasn't a big deal. I tell you, I learned from my dad. Because this world doesn't have a lot of peace. And if you're waiting for peace in this world, you may be waiting a while. You have to find your peace. Or you have to create your peace. And what I learned from my dad is that being an optimist and looking on the positive side of things brought him peace. And it also gave him the uncanny ability to love unconditionally because he would see people and he would think the best of them. And even if they mistreated him, you know, there'd be a season of readjustment, but he was always willing and desiring to trust again. Yeah, dad just, he just wasn't negative and he lived a pretty happy life. You know, uh, and he was a bit of a jokester and he always told me, he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't like people. <laughs> he loved people and he loved being around people, but he was a bit of an introvert. And so he needed his time alone, but he really did love people. And he would get these jobs where he would be around people and people would just naturally be drawn to him. It was, it was just hilarious. And he, he would come visit us on nights where we would have a group at our house and there'd be 40 people here. And he would just be in hog heaven and he'd tell me later after I left that I, I don't really like all those people there. He's sharing and talking. Quite a character. Yeah, dad, I sure miss you. All right, that fire's darn cold. We got to do something. I got to put more wood on it. So I'm going to leave you again. Crazy. So any of you out there, cigar smokers or newbies, hey, uh, Post in the comments what, what you like for cigars. You know, what do you like for whiskey or bourbon? Or what do you like to have with your cigars? Or what are you thinking about trying? Are you thinking about trying something? I've certainly tried a lot of cigars. And uh, there are some great cigars out there. And there are a lot of good cigars out there. And there are quite a few okay cigars. And man, there are some ones that are I'm not. If you guys have a cigar and a strong nicotine, those just aren't my cup of tea. Some of you out there may be into those strong nicotine. Those are not me. I like a little pepper. Uh, creamy is good, but I don't need creamy. A little cocoa is good. Um, when they're Before I light them, if they smell like alfalfa, I know that I'm going to like them. Those are usually a little more mild, but they're, they're great cigars. But yeah, I like a little on the spice side. Um, sometimes I like a surprise where they get a little strong at the end, but not too much blow you out. Because, you know... Some cigars, man, you get like halfway through and all of a sudden it's like, man, who turned up the heat on these things? And, and they get some kind of intense and you're just like, whew, more whiskey and uh, more uh, time in between puffing. <laughs> I can't do any of those fancy smoke rings. And once I tried to retrohale, that's like where you suck in your mouth and then you blow it out through your nose. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was bad. Let's just say that it was, yeah, you'd think I had the COVID times 10. So what do y'all think of the COVID? I'm, yeah, as you can tell, and if you're watching the channel, you probably realize, I don't think, I don't think much of it, honestly. And, uh, yeah, don't tell anyone, but I've been trying to catch it and I haven't been able, I've had a number of friends that have had it and I've been hanging around them. And honestly, I wonder if it's this cigar smoking. You guys are laughing. You're just like, Tom, you're so, that's so, you know, I actually do a fair bit of research and 
there are countries like France that are hoarding nicotine patches. They're not going to tell you smoke. No one's ever going to tell you smoke. And it's politically incorrect to think that nicotine would actually prevent COVID. And even if it did, which I think it does, they couldn't tell anyone because that would just justify things that you shouldn't justify. But your body does have nicotine receptors. And like, if you want a cognitive enhancer, make yourself some nicotine spray for some uh, uh, vaping juice. But you got to know what you're doing. Don't go out there and be stupid. And don't tell anybody I told you to do it. It's just an idea. If you're going to do it, you got to figure it out yourself. Now, I figured it out myself and I do it. I'm telling you, holy cow, man, it turns your brain on. And so that's no smoking. That's no, yeah, puffing. You know, this is just a puffer. This is in your mouth. I'm not going to say that it's healthy, but the stress relief is good. And, I oh, man, I got myself amped up today so much. And I finally said to Adrian, my wife, the, you know, smoking hot chick that was on last time. Gosh, she's so beautiful. I said, you know what? I don't have anything pressing, but I put all these freaking deadlines on me and I'm just stressing myself out, trying to get a bunch of stuff done. And uh, I just like, I finally like one of my friends texted me. He's like, hey, looking for a place to have a cigar. Well, I love to be that place. And if you are ever in the neighborhood and you want to have a cigar, man, come on by. My place is always open. I love great conversation. You can be a Republican, Democrat. I don't like rhinos much. You know, if if you're an uber conservative or uber liberal, I can deal with you. But you middle of the road washing people, ah, I don't like you too much. I'd rather that you have an opinion because uh, I actually admire that. But I was going to turn him down and say, no, I got stuff to do. And I was like, you know what? Especially in my last video, I just told you all how important community was in regards to raising kids. But community is so important for just your sanity. And that's part of why I'm doing these videos because they're you guys are like a community out there. And I mean, I can't really see you, but you are a community. And if you don't have community, you can watch this video and at least there's a little bit of a community. Hey, my son Porter's pulling up. Oh, I wasn't going to tell you my kid's name thing and I shouldn't have done that. Ah, oh, he's an adult. That's not a big deal. You know what's so funny about Porter? He's like, hey, dad, because he's a big Instagram guy and he has some pretty cool posts and stuff. And uh, he's like, hey, and I, I joined TikTok and I just posted my videos on Instagram. Hey, Port. Hey. How's it going? Good. You're showing a YouTube video here. YouTube video? Nice. Do you get a channel all over there? I'm working on it. Nice. What's it called? Cigar Night. Oh, it's a cigar YouTube? Well, I'm going to have a number of them. So. Nice. I'm going to yeah. have one for each of my podcasts and then. I'm just going to have one for cigars. Nice. I have a really cool cigar video I made one. You made a, you made a cigar video? They have the software called Adobe Pro. It's like a video and photo editing software. Did you buy that? I did. Is it expensive? Yeah. Is it hard to use? No. Super duper. How much was it? Oh, I don't recall. I think it's like 100 bucks to sign up. And then you pay like monthly monthly fee or something. I was gonna try the Canva because they, they they do video on the Canva. You can have my login for this if you want it. I already paid for it. So one thing here, family's always first. Sorry y'all. We are family, but they're poor. kids are here. I gotta give them attention. I love those dang kids. They're I, I love my dang family. It's just and they're not dang, they're wonderful. Why do I even say dang? I don't know why. I, there's some bad habits. Even I, I got a lot of bad habits, honestly. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I really like the cigar. And poor came home and I'm just like a squirrel. Lost my train of thought. Uh, but uh, sure enjoying the fire. What do you guys think of the background there in the the trees reflecting off the windows and now you can see my family inside turning on the lights. That's kind of cool. I kind of enjoy that. What do y'all do when you smoke cigars? Hang out with friends, watch games, play poker. Never been much of a gambler or a poker player to say that. I, I don't know. I, I don't know that I would be good at it. I'm certainly good at Yahtzee. It's like, dork. Cigar smokers, we don't play Yahtzee. Well, yeah, I am a family man. I like Yahtzee. I actually like playing games with the kids. It's oh, 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 
Oh. Oh, you guys. Funny mouth things. If you haven't noticed, I'm, I'm a little pensive about my teeth. You know, when I was a kid, I had braces on forever and my teeth. You know, my parents got divorced and uh, I like didn't go to the orthodontist for like four years after having my braces on. So I had my braces on for like 10 years and uh, oh, just led to all kinds of problems with my teeth. So sometimes I'm a little embarrassed about them. And so when I'm doing the video, you'll catch me looking at myself. Going, but I am who I am. Sorry. And uh, for better or for worse, um, you always have the option to turn me off. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I won't shed a tear. And if you're a Karen, <laughs> my wife actually ran into a Ken today at the grocery store that was harassing her for not wearing a mask. And she told the dude, dude, can't. And he kept harassing her. And in Montana, under Section 4, I thought, you know, this legal mandate crap. She doesn't have to. And so she told it. And it's harassing. Well, she went and got the manager. And the manager was like, that was wrong. And so, Ken, sorry. You, uh. You're going to get talking to today. Anyway, I digress again. I get sidetracked. I am so excited about my friend coming over tonight. And what's funny about my friend coming over, sometimes it's not my friend. Sometimes it's my friends. Because they tell each other that they're going to come over, but they don't necessarily tell me. So, word to the wise. Always be prepared. If you want to build a community, you need to be prepared. Be smart. Have extra cigars, have extra liquor, and find out what your friends like to drink. It's always great to have what they like. You know, most people have a favorite booze, and it's usually not too expensive unless you're like me. But I'll drink the average stuff too. It's like you, some of you are gonna laugh out there because uh, I think Maker's Mark is average, and that would be like a that would be an everyday drinker for me. And some of you are like, dude, that's like that's my one. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, sometimes I'm I'm kind of spoiled in the things I like. I, I drive an older truck so I can smoke nice cigars and drink nice whiskey. And some of you, man, your truck is like sweet. It's like you got 2022 and it's not even 2021 and you're already driving the 2022. Yeah, that's not me. I'm driving a 99 Power Stroke 7.3 liter, louder than all get out. And you're just like, well, that seems pretty fitting for you. Well, in this season is, and I love that truck because it's, it's, it's a little souped up a bit souped up so all these young kids try to pass me and i step on it and that thing just goes down the road with the big old toolbox on the back man it, it is a sight to see and the cloud of blue smoke and oh my gosh i have so much fun oh i gotta tell you guys a funny story and we're gonna wrap it up here for the evening i hope you enjoyed the stories about my dad and uh, hope you found some inspiration to not take life so seriously and that uh looking on the bright side only has benefits you can look at it two ways why not save that energy and use that energy for something like hugging on your kids, hugging on your wife, or maybe helping your kids work through some tough times because you got the emotional energy because you didn't lose it. Anyway, this story. Because I got to finish this cigar and I got to get ready for my friends. I get ready for them. Their drinks are ready when they get here. Okay, that's important. You that are going to start hosting you, they're going to build some community, you, they're going to get some... Uh, get some friends some uh real friends not mutual friends real friends but you treat them as generous as you can because they are so valuable they're worth so much more than you ever give them what they give you back in friendship a good friend is a hundred percent invaluable and you just you can't go wrong all right funny story and then we're gonna we're gonna wrap this thing up so i was coming back from belgrade that's where i live and we live outside of belgrade a bit so it's about a 10 minute drive into town. And so I'm in Belgrade and I think I'd went to the auto parts store and uh, the high school was getting out and I turned on to a street called Jack, you know, is it Frontage Road? Yes, Frontage Road. And uh, was heading back to my place but the high school got out. And so, man, there's these teenagers and they're just right on my behind, like right on my beep. Yeah, I don't like to cuss. Well, sometimes I do, but then again, I like to save my exclamation marks, right? So when I actually do, they mean things and you pay attention. So they're right on my behind and they're, they're just not letting loose. And they've got their stereo booming, windows down, arms out the window, you know, not being rude, but just being kids. And, you know, there's like tailgating this guy in this, you know, work truck. And so we pull up to the stoplight and they're, they're right behind me. And man, when that light turned, I just hit the pedal 
and there was a cloud of black smoke that filled their car. All I can look back is that they were still at the stoplight waiting for the smoke to clear up. <laughs> Made my day, and uh, I imagine down the road they chuckled a bit too, and maybe didn't follow so close. And uh, hey, with that, I hope you guys have a great week. And uh, yeah, look on the bright side. Things are things are good. Life is good.